Though we obviously all know coronavirus by now, as of today, there have been over 167,000 confirmed cases worldwide, although that number is probably much higher because many people who have it either haven't gotten tested or won't get tested at all. And out of these 167,000, over 7,000 have died. This viral outbreak is unlike anything any of us have ever seen. Schools are shut down, sporting events are shut down, toilet paper supply is running out. Like seriously, I can't find any anywhere. So yeah, this viral outbreak has been horrible, but it's also sparked a thought within me. Like what even is a virus? Have you ever actually stopped to wonder? Do you have any idea at all? Because if you look at viruses from a broad perspective, they are actually quite strange. They are these non-living biological entities that are not composed of cells, and they cannot maintain homeostasis on their own. But they do stuff that a lot of living organisms do. They have genetic material, they are programmed to reproduce, and they also evolve through natural selection. So how did these viruses get here, and why do they even exist? This video will go over three main theories that scientists pose in explaining the origin of viruses as well as how hunting for them on other planets could help us find alien life. Let's get into it. So we don't actually have a definitive answer to how viruses came into existence, but there are three main theories. And before we get into that, let's look at what separates a virus from a living organism, because viruses are kind of in the gray area. So as mentioned earlier, viruses have genetic material and can reproduce. However, a virus cannot self-regulate, cannot respond to stimuli, cannot grow, is not composed of cells. All they are is essentially just genetic material inside a protein casing. And also, they do not have the capacity within themselves to reproduce. They can reproduce, but they need a host to do so. These reasons are why a virus is not considered technically living. Think of viruses as nature's own nanotechnology. They are microscopic little entities that wander around and are designed to invade the cells of other organisms and hijack them in order to reproduce. So instead of being classified as a living organism, viruses are classified as obligate intracellular parasites. The first theory that attempts to explain how viruses came into existence is the regressive hypothesis. This hypothesis states that viruses stem from cells that have atrophied to the point where they are simply just genetic material inside a case of protein. However, this hypothesis does not take into account that the genetic material of many viruses is solely composed of RNA, not DNA. If the regressive hypothesis was 100% true, all viruses would only be composed of DNA. So basically, this hypothesis is saying that a cell has regressed to the point where it is simply just genetic material inside a protein casing. The next hypothesis is the progressive hypothesis. This hypothesis says that certain pieces of genetic material became capable of moving on their own, then gain the ability to be able to exit one cell and enter another. Basically, it's saying that bits of DNA or RNA became independent from the rest of a cell's genome, developed a protein casing, and split from its own host cell, and became able to inject other cells with its genetic material. The difference between these two hypotheses is that the progressive hypothesis is saying that viruses were birthed from cells, whereas the regressive hypothesis is saying that viruses pretty much are cells that have just broken down to the point where it is just genetic material and protein casing. So the next theory is much more radical than the first two, and it is by far the most interesting. This is the virus first hypothesis. This hypothesis states that viruses were in existence before cells were. It's saying that viruses were literally around 
before life even was. And this hypothesis was further articulated by two scientists in 2005 who said that in a world before cells, what came to be viruses still existed as self-replicating entities, different from viruses as we know today, but still a self-replicating figure. And that over time, they became more organized and complex to the point that membranes and cell walls began synthesizing, resulting in the birth of cells. This theory sheds light on the origins of life, which is why it is so fascinating. However, if we wanted to test any of these theories, it would probably take millions of years. So basically, we'll likely never know how viruses came into existence, and we won't know if they contributed to the origins of cells and life as we know it. Anyway, what we do know is that with viruses probably comes life, and anything with DNA or RNA in it indicates some form of being. So it's estimated that viruses on Earth outnumber cellular life by a factor of 10, which means that just a teaspoon of ocean water could contain as many as 50 million virions, which is basically just a virus without a host. The chairman of the virus focus group within NASA's Astrobiology Institute said that if an alien intelligence came to Earth looking for life, they could find evidence of such in just a drop of seawater. So because viruses and virions are the most abundant biological entity, he implies that we should be looking for them in the search of life on other planets. If we somehow found a virus, say on a meteor or comet or something, very few scientists would refute that as evidence of alien life, even though we don't consider viruses to be technically living. Some potential places we could look to probe for signs of life are Jupiter's moon Europa, which contains an ocean of water beneath the icy surface, Saturn's moon Enceladus, and also Mars. Obviously, if we were able to find virions within the water in these places, it'd be absolutely monumental. So why haven't we done so yet? Well, the main reason is that we need an electron microscope to be able to see these bad boys. And we don't yet have the ability to strap one onto a rover that's able to take the samples, put them in a microscope, and transmit the data back to Earth. It totally seems like we should have that technology at this point, but surprisingly, we don't. Another reason the prospect of looking for virions in the search of alien life isn't common is that it isn't taken as seriously in astrobiology. Sure, finding virions or viruses on another planet would be a very important discovery. It wouldn't be this absolutely groundbreaking, insane discovery that would happen if we found cellular life somewhere else other than Earth. Anyway, if you made it this far in the video, thank you. I kind of clickbaited you with coronavirus in the title, but it looks like you've held up just fine as you made it to this point in the video. Leave a like, drop a comment, do what you have to do so the algorithm promotes my content so more people can see it. As always, guys, have a great day and peace.